conclusion section and there are a few tips that I plan on sharing with you guys. So you come with me onto the iPad. Now one of the first things that I mentioned on here is that you ensure both parts of the question is answered. By this I mean sometimes it will say, do you think government spending should be on smoking to ensure that obesity is tackled, for example. And for example, if one of the conclusions is that government spending should be on smoking because it's cheaper than other alternatives, yes, it does speak about the government spending, but it doesn't answer or the second part of the question, which is related to obesity. So even though you might think, oh, what sort of link is that? I've just come up with that on top of my head. But understand that two parts of the questions need to be answered. Usually there will be one out of four will have both parts of the question answered. Now the second tip that I give is that you ensure that you do not make no assumptions. By this, if a answer or conclusion is relying upon um, tendencies of people and using past stats, yes, that may be something that makes it a strong argument, but it is relying that that, that assumption will reoccur. So try to stay away from things that rely mainly on assumptions because this is very, very important. Usually there will be an alternative to this presented for you. So try to choose something that does not seem like an assumption, something that primarily stays with the facts and figures and has statistics alongside it. I'm not saying every statistic conclusion um, is one to go for, but it's a clue, but it's a clue, a sign that probably, if you haven't selected it, that that is the answer. And hopefully we'll go through a few questions in which you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And as you can see, I've mentioned little assumptions as possible again, just to emphasize that the moment that there is an assumption in an argument that is not valid, anything that is built on it, will also be invalid. So also one thing that you can do is that within the four options, without even having to look at the question, you can see which two are mutually exclusive. So if you're in between, for example, if you're certain about two and uncertain about another two, if the certainties are mutually exclusive with one of the uncertainties, yes, it sounds a little bit complex, but bear with me. If your certainty is mutually exclusive with one of your uncertainties, it makes sure that that conclusion is incorrect because it cannot be correct and hence you'll be left with one. So yeah, process of elimination, I feel like I'm back at primary school, but that's usually the best way to do it. After going through the assumptions, after going through answering two parts of the question, it's sort of like a checklist to make sure that you are scoring those marks on those easy questions. Another major tip that I give is that do not choose opinion-based answers. Do not choice. Oh no, 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 not good. Don't choose opinion-based answers. So by this, you know what that means. Anything that tends to mention opinions and personal beliefs will primarily be a weaker argument. I haven't personally seen any strongest argument that has opinions within it, especially if the argument is based upon the opinions. Because an opinion may support an argument. However, it is not sufficient in the opinion, in and of itself, that that makes it the strongest argument. And again, I mentioned that stats and other certain points regarding that stats and facts and figures essentially facts and figures let me just write that down handwriting shambolic and also stay away from any red herrings any conclusion that talks about anything unrelated to the question just try to avoid i think that's more obvious than the others because usually it's just majorly silly um it just talks about some random stuff. For example, if it says, should the government spend on the cessation of smoking? And it talks about smoking is good for people. Like, you know what I'm trying to say. So hopefully, sorry guys for boring you guys out, but just know that it's gonna pay off. Don't worry about it. It's gonna pay off. And it's better me telling you these tips than you going about and trying to find out ways to avoid them. And basically just the madness in it. So let's get on to the next video. Catch you guys in a bit. If you have very minimal time, I have an ebook that is present in the link description. And that's my killer, killer, killer tips. Essentially, I explained them in the video, but there are some tips in there that I haven't really explained. Basically, catch you guys on the other side. Why is it hard for me? Why is it 